Delicious. A lot of people give Nintendo flack for having a formula for their more popular franchises. It was really noticeable during the Wii days with Mario, and ever since then, Kirby has been fighting the same stigma. The trick is that with Kirby Star Allies, Nintendo has shown me one of two things. Either they've learned a thing or two since then and know how to hide it so well that the retread ground almost doesn't matter, or this was just one of those happy little accidents. Kirby games these days are the standard we've come to expect, jumping, flying, and eating the souls of your enemies to gain their powers, with a twist. In Triple Deluxe, that twist was the Hypernova power that showed up for, like, two levels. In Planet Robobot, it was the armor, and while they were better at remembering it existed that time, in Star Allies, the gimmick is automatically better because it's always around. Remember how in Superstar you could turn enemies into friends and then they'd immediately run into everything and die? It was great. But in Star Allies, not only do they tend not to die, but you can have up to three of them, and they can combine their powers together to further cement your role as the most vicious marshmallow in the land. This alone would make the game worth it because of how novel it is to platform and fight bosses as a squad instead of just one character, but then you can transform your group into a wheel, a flying star, which could honestly work as its own game, a bridge, aka the worst one, and a train, aka the best one. Star Allies is a way of keeping you on your toes like that, and not in the annoying ways either. In fact, don't worry about building your team a specific way so that you'll always be ready for every kind of puzzle they might throw at you, because the tools you need for any situation are always right at or before where you need them. Need to cut something? Here's a sword power. Do you have to burn the rope? Just use the fire guy you picked up a second ago. And even if you accidentally kill it or something, just go off screen for a bit and return and it'll respawn no problem. So go, my children. Live your dreams of saving the universe with Chef Kawasaki. Fulfill your fantasy of simultaneously commanding Kirby, Meta Knight, King DDD, and of course, Bonkers. Even though you already did that once. And remember, these guys don't go away. They are always there helping you solve puzzles and take on larger enemies, all without getting in the way of the actual platforming. They nail that sweet spot between fundamentally changing how you play the game without interfering with that baseline expectation you come in with. It's an innovation that complements the core idea, not conflict with it. Which is more than I can say for Star Fox Zero, and yes, I am still salty about that game, thanks for asking. This is why I say Nintendo is learning, and why I'm not too bent out of shape about the fact that I'm gonna look back on Star Allies in two months and realize that at the end of the day, I was essentially playing the same game again. Yeah, Nintendo has a formula, but it's a good formula. Kirby may be popular, but he doesn't make the kind of mega money needed to justify an Odyssey or Breath of the Wild style revolution to his core gameplay. And while that would be nice, I don't think he necessarily needs it either. We all know the drill by this point. Play around with a new idea, grab some collectibles, have an epic showdown against the final boss set to the best music in the game, beat the side modes once and then never touch them again, and by the time you get tired of the new mechanic, you've already given up on the true arena because, repeat after me, that sh ain't worth it. And that's fine. Star Allies is fine. It doesn't need to set the world on fire to be enjoyed, and just because something isn't Game of the Year material, that doesn't make it a bad game, especially if you haven't played all the other ones like me already. My only concern is if standards will stay that way. See, we're in a market where every game in existence is currently getting ported to the Switch. I'm pretty sure I can play Six Days in Fallujah on this thing now. You've got absolutely stunning experiences on that platform like Celeste and Embers of Miram, which are doing new and interesting things and cost way less than Star Allies does. So even if you're stepping up and giving more than the bare minimum, is that still enough? Eh, that's a question you're gonna have to answer yourself. I think there's room for both, but I also have a little extra money to work with at the moment. Mostly because I've been trading games like this back in as soon as I'm done with them, but you, as they say, do you. I give Kirby Star Allies my rating of a pepperoni pizza. It's not the best thing ever, and eventually you're going to want to spice it up a bit, but sometimes all you want is an old classic. <laughs>